Welcome to Daz Geek. Boy, do I have an interesting subject to cover with you today. We've been talking a lot about privacy and security, but what about privacy and security when it comes to your workplace? Because work from home has kind of blown up, everybody's starting to look at ways that they can move their organizations to have a piece of work from home, either a couple days or full time. There's another trend that's starting to kick up and it's been there for a while, but it's really starting to trend up there in the top things that organizations are looking to implement. And that's basically spy software on your employees, spying on your employees. This is to stop whistleblowers. This, of course, in some cases is to protect the company from liabilities and those things. I can tell you, though, as somebody who's speaking from the perspective of not just an employee, but somebody who has managed people for two decades now, and has led some of the top performing teams in an organization with 40,000 plus employees, been recognized multiple times, the top 10% performing groups in these organizations, that spying on your employees is the worst thing you could ever do as a leader. You're gonna lose their trust, you're gonna lose their loyalty. In fact, if you're looking at that stuff, you're probably a manager, not a leader, and there's a big difference between the two. Despite this, however, not everybody's going to take my advice on leadership and how to truly lead and empower your team. So what companies are moving towards instead is how can we spy our employees and see if they're really working as much as we want them to. In addition, there's all of these cloud services, even companies that aren't necessarily looking to spy, all these cloud services, they're seeking to integrate everything. And what happens is in a work from home environment, you're bringing that computer into your home network and it's starting to see all of these devices and things on your network. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is how you can protect yourself so that you can keep your livelihood intact while working from home. Because I've seen a lot of really smart people who have a lot of years, decades of experience get caught up in some of these things. They don't follow these things and they end up losing their job over something really stupid and silly. So I'm going to show you how to protect yourself from that. Let's get into it right now. So first, I just kind of want to put a period on this point of how much of an issue this is becoming. So first, I saw this article link on our Destination Linux forum, a part of the Destination Linux network, by the way. It's an amazing network, lots of amazing podcasts and talent there. So go check that out. Go subscribe to their channels, the podcasts that are out there, and also join this forum. You can talk to a community of a lot of like-minded people like ourselves who care about these things, privacy and security. When I went and looked at this article, which is kind of what made me want to make this video, I noticed something interesting. They were talking about Microsoft specifically rolling out new features in their Office 365 products that are kind of adding AI and machine learning uh, capabilities to observe employees, look for what they think may be um, devious behavior, or other things that they want to alert the employer about. In addition, if you're part of the Office 365 suite, you may have noticed you're starting to get these productivity emails and things like that if your organization has enabled them, which tell you basically how productive you were for the week. They also kind of give you a breakdown of your day each day. All of this stuff, which is kind of initially released under the guise of, hey, this is going to help you be more productive, is also or can be utilized in a negative situation in which the companies are going to utilize it to punish and of course create distrust. And that goes to another article here that I thought was really good. What is employee monitoring software? I've links to all of these below. Highly recommend you read them. But it talks about that live video feed showing employee workstation screens, key loggers, monitoring keywords, even personal apps and employee use. So there's all of these tools out here and if you look at all of the things that they're looking to monitor, that can monitor all of this stuff going on in your organization. Of course, what does this do? It creates distrust. It creates a further barrier between you and your employees. It creates a lack of loyalty. It creates a lack of leadership because leaders become more managers and they get lazy and they sit there and look at data and analysis instead of actually talking to their employees and making sure they understand what's going on in employees' lives, which is one of the keys to being successful in leadership, but they rely on this kind of junk here instead. All right, so let's get into the actual tips and tricks here. And of course, as always, leave your comments below. Let me know your tips and tricks, things that you do to keep yourself safe, to keep your private life separate from your work life here. But let's get started. Don't make it personal. This is the biggest advice that I can give people. I talk to my teams about this all the time before these things even took off. 
Uh, when I led teams in IT, I knew what IT was capable of, some of the things that we could see and do. So I've always told all of my teams to follow these rules here that I'm going to give you. Never use your work computer for anything other than work. Number one, this is a liability to the company. On taxes and things, one of the things they ask is, how much did you use this particular device or the internet or the room or your office for actual work purposes? The reason why your company is giving you a device is so that you can work on it, not so you can use it as your personal computer. So many people make this mistake because they're like, oh, it's awesome. I got this nice computer from work. I'll use it to browse. I'll use it to write personal emails and all this stuff. Don't do it. Everything that you're doing on that computer can be monitored. It also can hurt the company. So I'm protecting company and you here. You do not want to use your device for personal stuff. Bringing your own device is a bad idea. A lot of companies, even big ones, now have this policy where you can use things like Zen Desktop or otherwise to bring your own device. If you have to have your own device, then don't do anything personal on it. So if you're going to use your own personal device, you're going to go out and buy your own personal computer and you're going to put something like Zen Desktop on it. I still highly recommend that you do nothing personal on that machine at all and you use it only for work, which means bring your own device is a bad idea to begin with. You might as well just use the company's asset. Your company doesn't provide an asset. Well, that's just weird. I've heard it exists with smaller companies and things, but in any case, if they don't buy an asset and make that asset just for work, don't do anything personal. Never sync your personal browser, bookmarks, history, et cetera. I'm so surprised how many people I see do this. They have Chrome browser on their work computer, and so they will sync their personal Chrome browser links there and just browse like normal. There are so many privacy implications there for you, so many potential embarrassing situations for you uh, on there. And your company can learn a lot about your bookmarks and the history in your browser that also gets synced and your passwords that may also get synced into there as well. That's a huge security risk. This is something that happens in companies all the time. Employees go rogue. They're mad. They're mad at their managers or whomever. And so they go and find ways they can do damage. Well, if you're over there with a computer sitting on your desk that you leave unlocked and somebody can go in there and download all your passwords because you synced your personal stuff. That's, that's really bad. Don't do it again. If you just stick to never use your work computer for anything other than work, you're going to be good. So don't log into email, social media sites, or any other personal accounts. Use your cell phone, bring a tablet to work to do on lunch break, something else. Don't move data or do research from your personal accounts into your work accounts. So sometimes there may be files that come from healthcare or something else, or you need to download some paycheck stubs. And your idea is I'm going to go in there. I'm going to download some of the files from my personal computer, move them to my work computer and these type of things. I highly recommend you don't do that, especially if it's not business related stuff, because all of that is a privacy disaster waiting to happen. We talked about the CASB, cloud access security broker solutions such as Netscope, Zscaler, act as a man in the middle and can decrypt everything you're doing on your accounts. So again, if you're sitting there and you're looking at your personal accounts, you're looking at your personal Facebook, your Twitter, number one, why are you still on Facebook? But anyways, uh, then these, these devices, these man in the middle type software pieces can actually be capturing screenshots of all of that you may actually be impacted in your work because of some posts that you've said that it has access to, some things that you're looking at, some groups you're a part of. This could impact your career. Keep them separate. Never sync your personal files using third-party file storage on your corporate device. Never plug in a personal USB drive in your corporate device to transfer files unless it's approved by the organization. That's because many times there are security detections in place that track if a USB device is inserted without the user's knowledge and it generates alerts for the InfoSec team. So I want to say here that not only are these from my experience, but I have someone who's been helping me through this series with these privacy videos that their career is in InfoSec. And this is one that they personally added in here as a big gotcha. So keep in mind that this is not just mine. This is also another professional InfoSec person giving you advice on ways that you can protect your personal data and make sure that your work isn't able to spy on you. You are being watched. This is nothing to do with even new software. This has been going on for a decade or more. Assume every message in IM is being read. This is so critical for you all to understand. 
because we get we make friends at work and we have situations where bad things happen or you come across a really stupid person at work and you just want to tell your friend how dumb they are or how mad you are at them you want to say it while you're on a call you want to do a secret im to them and tell them how dumb this other person is or maybe you're just saying things about your political beliefs or other things all of that is being read number one i've seen many people get busted because they're sharing their screen and then an instant message pops up and it says you know something bad about somebody on the call or making fun of somebody on the call because they're screen sharing their entire desktop, which you should never do. Just screen share the actual program that you're like Excel or whatever you're trying to show on that call. Never share your entire desktop. I've seen a lot of people, including in the executive team, get in trouble for things like this. But even when you're not sharing your screen or you're not in a meeting, every message in IM is being read. Do not send messages that you do not want HR to read, that you do not want your boss to read, that you don't want another employee to read. Just don't send them while you're at work. If you think it, don't say it. If you say it, don't write it. If you write it, don't be surprised at the consequences you're gonna have from that. And things can be easily taken out of context. You may be saying something is a joke, but out of context, it looks like something else entirely. Assume every meeting is transcribed. This is a new thing that's happening. All of these services out there are transcribing what you're saying on a voice call directly, and it's super accurate. It's amazingly accurate to transcribe all of these calls on a conference. So don't just think because you're on a voice conference call or you're calling one-on-one -on -one to somebody else on your team utilizing a work service like Skype or something else that that is not being transcribed and that's not being recorded and that can't be used against you. So don't feel comfortable sitting on a one-on-one -on -one voice call or in a meeting that's just you and another person or some very close friends of yours at work that that's going to be private. It's not. Never store any personal photos, text messages, chat conversations on a corporate device. All of this is being monitored and viewed by the organization, guaranteed. Do not install work applications on your personal device. Keep a secondary device for that. This was advice I got from another director in our organization who had two cell phones. Why do you have two cell phones? One's personal, one's work. If the work has a bunch of applications they want you to install, then have a separate device for it. Keep it separated. This is going to help you tremendously not send, oops, I sent that IM that was meant for my wife or partner to somebody at work. How embarrassing. You're going to be much better off keeping the two worlds completely separate. Get manual privacy sliders to cover your cameras. I'll have links to some good ones down below that I've utilized. Get conference call speaker headset with clear and easy to read mute button so you know you're actually on mute at all times. I have a link to some of the ones that I've utilized in the past that I like uh, that will help you with that because you can get in a lot of trouble having side conversations when you're at home and you're not actually on mute. We've all seen the videos on that. If you work from home, segment your work computers from your personal network. Using guest network is the easiest place to start. So there are ways you can professionally segment your networks out. It's a little more advanced and something we can get into in a later video. The easiest way is most routers have what they call a guest network. So utilize a guest network or enable that in your router. And on that guest network, that's where you would put all your work computers. And on your regular network, you could have your personal stuff when you're working from home. That way you don't have attached storage devices and things like that that your computer's auto discovering from work because it won't have access to them on a segmented portion of your network. Last but not least, be the change. Make it known in employee surveys that privacy is important to you. You can mention these things in a very respectful way that you wanna be able to maintain your privacy while you're working from home. See if you can get other software installed that doesn't focus on spyware tracking, et cetera. Many times IDEs, messaging platforms, project management tools and platforms can be changed. The employees do have a decision here if the org's top performers recommend it. If your team doesn't perform well and they miss every target and then you go and say, well, I don't want to utilize this Slack. I want to utilize this other open source tool. It's probably not going to have a lot of weight. However, if you're a high performing team, you do amazing things and you say, we could be more productive if we have this tool over here instead of using this mainstream tool, you may be surprised the type of things that you can get implemented and help protect you and others in the company. Be willing to spend money to keep your job safe. That's the whole thing with like 
you know, be willing to go buy a separate device, a tablet, a separate phone and things to protect your privacy here. Because at the end of the day, yes, it's going to cost you some money up front, but it's going to save you your job potentially in the future. So be willing to spend that. Just because everyone else does it doesn't mean you won't be the one they make an example of. This is the thing that gets most people. Well, I know Bob and Joanne and Susan and all these people do all their personal stuff on their work computer. They talk about it all the time. I see them browsing their Gmail. I see them working on YouTube and all this stuff. Just because they get away with it doesn't mean you will. Eventually, someone's going to be made an example of, and it could be you picked out. So just because you see other people doing dumb stuff doesn't mean you should do it. Isn't that the whole bridge, mom, jump, if some friend jumps off a bridge... You wouldn't jump on. Anyways, the point is don't do it just because everyone else does it. You see people using their personal stuff. Let them get caught. Let them get in trouble for it. Or if they're cool people, then let them know about this video and how they can protect themselves and be more private. So none of this is foolproof. There's always situations where things could be recorded or mics could be turned on or other things. But this is going to make you much, much safer. Keep your data private while you're working from home. I hope this video has helped you to get some ideas, tips and tricks on how you can keep yourself private while working from home. The world is changing, AI, data collection, it's everywhere, it's on everything. So the best we can do is try to put in some practices that will help us to avoid it and not be caught up in these things as much as possible. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons out there that continue to support this channel and a huge thanks to DigitalOcean if you go to do.co slash DLN, you could spin up your own cloud service. There you could put up things like NextCloud. You want to talk about privacy and getting out of the cloud services like Office 365 and all of that? Think about spinning up a NextCloud server. Or if you want to help out the Tor network, you can set up Tor nodes out there on DigitalOcean. You get $100 free credit if you go to do.co slash DLN to check it out. They sponsor the entire Destination Linux network. They're the best cloud platform out there, period, bar none. I've used them forever before they were ever a sponsor. DigitalOcean, they're our friends. Go check them out and learn about servers. And this learning of servers and all of their cloud agnostic tutorials will also help you to understand how businesses, corporations, and everything are implementing them make you more knowledgeable, you'll know how these things are utilized and be able to avoid some of the tactics and things that are being used in the software. So do.co slash DLN, check them out, $100 free credit. Thank you so much for watching the video. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. <laughs>